Good evening, everybody. Praise the Lord. Right on the dot. We are on time tonight. <laughs> this is Pastor Bill Emmons here, uh, Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International. Uh, this is our Tuesday night live Bible study. And I want you to be aware that the healing anointing is ready to flow. It's flowing right now. If you need healing in your body, now's the time to receive. Don't wait. Uh, how do you say, how do I receive? Well, there's a number of things you can do. You can reach out. Oral Roberts used to tell people, touch your TV and, you know, as a point of contact. Well, if you're watching on some kind of device, put your hand on that just as a point of contact. See, there's no, there's no time and there's no distance in the spirit realm. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. doesn't matter what time it is in the world. Right now, the healing anointing is flowing into your body, into your situation in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Father, I don't care what it is that they've been plagued with, what the doctors have said, it doesn't matter. Father, what matters is you said that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse. And Father, you said we should cast out devils and we should bind and we should loose. Whatever we bind is bound, whatever we loose is loosed. So I bind up sickness and disease in your body right now and I loose the healing power of God right now to flow into your body in the name of Jesus. Now, let me tell you this, that as the word goes forth tonight in every service we have, the anointing is on the word and the Bible declares that the anointing destroys the yoke. So if you listen tonight, don't just listen for four or five minutes and turn it off like, you know, we know people do. They just want something so fast. Give me a little quick shot of something and I'm gonna go on to find something else and then something else. No, that's a waste of time. You're not really getting anything of any value. You need to stay and listen and watch. The Bible says the anointing is on the word. As the word goes forth, that anointing is flowing right now and it is destroying the yoke. The things that have bound you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, relationally, it doesn't matter. Whatever has been binding you up, whatever has been holding you down and, and putting pressure on you, trying to drag you down, that thing is broken and it cannot continue to hold you down and put you in bondage anymore in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, that that anointing is already flowing on me. Praise God. Just want to uh, quick uh, just share with you a couple of things. Uh, yesterday, uh, our youngest son and his wife and, and their daughter came over and <clears throat> we had uh, kind of a pre-birthday barbecue. Today is actually my birthday. We had kind of a pre-birthday barbecue, a Memorial Day combination, and we had such a good time. And, uh, and we had barbecue chicken and we had uh, brats. I don't know if you know what brats are, but boy, they are really good. Uh, bratwurst, I guess that's the, the right name for them. And uh, we had uh, burgers and uh, boy, I got seasoning that is so good. Everything tastes good, but uh, we had a good time and God really blessed and, and what a blessed, uh, peaceful day. Mary, can you really quick go and get that card from Jonathan? I want to just read what it says. It blessed me so much. And I appreciate all of you that have sent me birthday wishes today. Uh, uh, it's just amazing. They keep coming in. I thought, uh, you know, well, it'd be nice if, if my family sent me birthday wishes and they, they've been coming in, but apparently a lot more. So I want to thank everybody for your birthday wishes. I appreciate it. I praise God. I have another birthday as of August on August 8th last year, the devil was trying to end that. And, uh, you know, praise God, God raised me up and I've now experienced another birthday. Uh, our youngest son, John, uh, and his wife, Cassandra gave me this birthday card yesterday and it, I, I got a kick out of it. It says, um, dad for your birthday, we're going to wash your car, but then we remember you always say, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. <laughs> I just got, I got a kick out of that. And um, uh, it's, I just wanted to share that with you. So praise God for that. Uh, and uh, all of the rest of you that uh, have been sending me wishes and so forth, I really appreciate it. Uh, we are, uh, well, to my birthday, I have now, uh, I'm not bragging, I'm just giving God the glory for it. I have now outlived my mother, I've outlived my father, and I've outlived my grandmother. I don't know how old my grandfather was when he passed away. 
Um, but I've, I've outlived the ones I know about and I'm not done. I got a long ways to go. The Bible says that God will satisfy us with long life. And at 73 years old, I got a long ways to go before I'm satisfied. And so, you know, you don't have to settle for a short life. Uh, my dad passed away at age 48. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't live with my dad. So uh, there wasn't a strong relationship in that sense. But I still loved him. He's still my dad. And we were developing uh, in our early marriage, we were developing a relationship with him and his wife and, and my three half brothers. And uh, then to have him pass away unexpectedly uh, was quite a shock. But I was determined, even back then, I was determined, you know what, I'm redeemed from the curse. Death cannot hold me. Death cannot take me. And the devil tried and he failed and he's not going to come back for a better season because I'm not giving him a better season. God raised me up for a purpose. And our purpose is to reach as many people as we can with the good news. See, the good news of the gospel is, sure, the, the, the basic message is salvation. But in salvation, there's more good news. There's healing, there's deliverance, there's provision, there's peace, there's prosperity, actually. That's part of salvation. And I'm teaching and preaching as much as I can uh, to let people know there's more available. Uh, you know, just to say I'm a Christian, but I've got a miserable life and I just can't hardly wait to get to heaven. Uh, no, that's the devil trying to shorten your life and put you in, in uh, depression, uh, you know, whatever you know, it is you're experiencing. But we can live a long life and a healthy life, Amen. whole spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, I got prayer request Sunday uh, for actually turns out to be a cousin of mine uh, that I've known since I was a little kid and believe in God for his healing and his restoration. And uh, age has nothing to do with it because we can be like the Apostle Paul uh, who as he was a younger man, he said, you know, I would love to go home and be with the Lord, but it's better for you that I remain. So he made a decision to, to remain. But then at, in his 80s, uh, he comes back and says, I've run my race. I've finished my course. And now there's a, a crown of life laid up for me. What's he saying? He said, okay, I've done everything God put me here to do. It's time for me to go. He was the one that made those decisions. By trusting the Lord, we can make decisions. We, we don't have to live 50, 60, 70, 80 years and figure that's it. Uh, you don't have to get senile. You don't have to get weak and, and sore joints and arthritis and poor eyesight and, and uh, you know, all the things that people talk about with aging. You know, that's all under the curse. And we've been redeemed from the curse. It has no part in us. The law of the spirit of life has made us free from the law of sin and death. And so I resist the devil, the Bible says we should, just like I resist the devil, the curse is his nature, trying to be forced and manifested on us. I resist the curse. And since we are redeemed from the curse, we're redeemed back to the blessing. And so I walk in the blessings and you can walk in the blessings too, in the name of Jesus. All right, um, let's see. I do want to mention a couple of things. Uh, we have now... Uh, some important documentation uh, on the Dominion voting machines. I won't say anything more because I don't want to, you know, get shut down uh, on the various uh, social media platforms I'm on. But if you want us to email you a copy of uh, the information we've got, feel free to send me an email, w-e-m-m-o-n-s-0-1 at gmail.com, and I will email you a copy of what we've got. I uh, want to give you a phone number. This is the U.S. Capitol switchboard. You know, there's primaries going on right now uh, for the, the main parties, uh, Democrats and Republicans. And it's important that we step up. And I know there's a lot of Democrats that are saying, I've had enough of this nonsense. I'm, I'm not voting Democrat this time. I'm voting Republican. Uh, because they see the nonsense is going on in the world and right here in our own country. And uh, so... If there's something that you've heard about that um, you're not in agreement with, uh, with policy that's trying to be made, uh, get, a, get a message to your uh, representative, your, uh, you know, your, your representatives in Congress, in the House of Representatives and in the Senate, and um, 
let them know you're opposed to being a part of the World Health Organization or you're opposed to being a part of NATO or um, the uh, uh, United Nations or, or uh, submitting to this this terrible thing that they want to do in uh, the World Health Organization and submit everybody to their choice of uh, you know closing down a nation uh, for the threat of some kind of virus. And if you want to voice your opinion on that, here's the phone number. Uh, call area code 202 and it's 224-3121. And, and then of course, before you do that, go online and find out who your representative is and who your senator is, and then ask for them. They'll, they'll give you to their line, their, their machine, and you give them your name and tell them you're opposed to. And, and if there's a Senate bill or uh, whatever, you know, maybe the president's trying to do something you don't like, let your voice be heard and tell your congressman that, that or woman that uh, you're opposed to this or that you're for something and let them know, let them hear your voice. Amen. All right. That's it for politics. <laughs> We've got other social media platforms. I'm going to be talking about some things in more detail, but tonight uh, I want to get on uh, into our message. Um, the title for those of you that are taking notes is ways to release spiritual power. This is actually part nine of releasing spiritual power, the series that I'm doing. And, um, but we're going to talk about that specific aspect tonight. Let me give you a br brief recap where we've gone in this series, just to kind of get particularly all you new people up to date. You know, we're running 12 to 15,000 views a week right now. My goal my next goal is 20,000 views a week. And then once we hit that for a month or so, then I'm going to up it to 25. And you know how you can help us reach those, those extra people, more people? You can like, you can share. Whatever social media network you, you find this on, like our broadcast, share our broadcast, follow us, uh, click the notification bell. Uh, in other words, anything you can do to get more uh, attention to our, our social media platforms. Uh, we went from uh, two, let's see, well, now it's been a year and a half ago, or two years ago. Uh, we were averaging 50 to 75 uh, views per week for our services. And we thought that was pretty good for being a ministry that's not real big in the physical. Uh, and then we made this move, and now we're averaging 12 to 15,000. Uh, over the past nine months. Uh, that's been our average uh, and increasing. So thank you for your help. And if you'll share, that'll get more people's attention. All right, so here's the recap. Uh, I'm just going to go through. I'm not going to give you the scriptures yet. You can go back and pick up the whole series on my YouTube channel, Pastor William Emmons, and it's all there. Uh, back There's about three years worth of messages there. So you can go back and pick up a number of the series that I've done. All right, so spiritual laws supersede natural laws and human laws. And all I'm going to say about that is when the disciples were told not to preach or teach anymore in the name of Jesus, um, I'm just checking to make sure my, my, my microphones are on. <laughs> It'd be terrible to go through this hour-long broadcast and have my, find out my microphones are off. Um, anyway, when the disciples were told not to preach or teach anymore in the name of Jesus, uh, Peter stands up in front of the disciples, and he said, which is better? Should we obey the laws of man, or should we obey the laws of God? And of course, we always have to obey the laws of God above the laws of man. But the laws of God are spiritual laws. They supersede every other law, every other kind of law, uh, even natural law. Uh, God has a way to, to protect you in every situation that, that he will use the spiritual laws on your behalf to, to override natural laws, that that's what it takes to protect you and defend you and get you where you need to be. So we got to get, we got to get that in our hearts that the word of God, which is based on spiritual laws. And I don't mean the thou shalt nots. I'm talking about spiritual laws that work. You, you talk about things like the, the law of gravity, the law of lift, the law of thrust for pilots. They understand that 
um, the, the laws governing electricity. We know they work. We can't always see them, but we know they're there. We've got lights and power and we're running cameras and, and um, monitors, you know, in here. Why? Because there's a, there, there's a, a law of electrical, I don't know the right terminology, but electricity, let me say it that way, that allows us to flip a switch and the electricity flows into our uh, various pieces of equipment and we get the lights, we get the cameras, the monitors, and we're able to broadcast this. Well, God's laws, even though those are God's laws in the natural, God's laws in the spirit are higher than that. And they will, they will supersede all of that. All right. Um, we're told in the Bible to act like God, to copy and follow his example. So we ought to start doing that. Um, and let me tell you how God created things. So you can get an idea how you can begin to walk in his creative power. First, he envisioned it. Go back to Genesis. You see this pattern that I'm going to give you. Uh, he envisioned it. He deemed it. And the word deemed means to decide. So God, after he envisioned it, he decided what he was going to do in the way of creating man and what he was going to put man into as far as this earth and the garden condition and so forth. So he, he envisioned it. He deemed or decided. He, de he then declared it. And then he expected it. And then he acted like it was done. <laughs> Those are the steps, one, two, three, four, five steps that will put you in a place where you can walk in the laws of creativity, the laws of God's creation, which we know that he taught Adam and Eve to do that, and they went and messed it up. And so, but the, the laws are still there. We can still do the same things that God does in creation in our own lives and, and create an atmosphere uh, of faith and blessing and peace and prosperity in our lives and in our families. Amen. All right. You got to understand that our words, uh, uh, let me back up. I missed something. Our vision is our goal or our hope. The Bible term we use is hope. Uh, hope is a confident expectation of good things to come. When I'm hoping something, I'm not just hoping and praying and, and but never expect anything. When, I'm, when I apply the, the spiritual principle or law of hope, what I do is I find the word of God that, that promises that, and I take a stand on that, and, and then I let the word develop a confidence in me. I let the word develop in my mind the vision of what I want to, to have manifested in my life. And as I apply the word and release my faith into that situation, my faith will go forth and work on the vision or the hope, the expectation. And you know, the Bible says that the, um, now faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, or we can say it this way, faith is the substance of things I've envisioned. And, and get this, and you boy, I'll tell you, you really need to get this. Faith is also, because it, it goes on and it says, the evidence Faith is our evidence of things not yet manifested. How do I know that I can be healed? Because I've got God's word on. I apply my faith to the word of God through my words and action, my prayers and so forth. And I expect healing in my body. I see where the word of God says, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's a covenant promise. And God is a covenant keeping God. And so I looked at my covenant keeping God and he says, put me in remembrance of my word. It's not because he forgot. It's because we forget. And when we put him in remembrance, we're remembering that we have a covenant with God that I'm getting excited. I'm about to preach. <laughs> we have a covenant with the God that created everything. And then he gave it to man. And you should, you should listen to my Sunday message past Sunday because I got into some detail and some scripture translations that prove that so clearly. But God gave it to man. God, God gave it to mankind. Adam and Eve were the first ones and, and they missed it. They blew it and they lost it. But, and it took, you know, what, 4,000 years for man to get it back. And it wasn't until Jesus came and he won it back for us. He paid the price to redeem us, to put us back in that condition before God, where we could walk in the dominion, the authority, the blessing. So when I find the scripture that promises me something, I've got God's word on it. 
he swore by himself because there was nothing greater to swear by. So I find a covenant promise and I take a stand on that and I, I meditate on that until my mind becomes renewed and I begin to see it in here. And when I begin to see it in here, it won't be long before I see it out there. Amen. And, and you know, we're, we're believing for some things right now and we've got our faith out there working and, and it's, it is working. And, and I'm not tied to time. I'm not tied to distance. I know that God has made a promise to me and that the things I'm believing for, they will manifest. And, and you say, well, when's that going to happen? Not up to me to, to try and figure out when. My job is to believe God. Paul says, after having done all, stand. I'm preaching. I've, I've jumped off my notes all together here. Mary's over, Pastor Mary's over there taking notes like crazy. All right. Uh, maybe not like crazy, like, like a woman of faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. We have to recognize that our words carry power, whether for good or for evil. The, the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. So you have to understand that and make a choice to speak words of life, words of peace, words of prosperity, words of provision, words of healing. Instead of speaking about all the things that you see, feel, hear, and so forth. Uh, if you're always talking about what the world talks about, you're in big trouble. Because the world doesn't talk about the things of God, doesn't talk about the promises of God. Most of what the world talks about is not positive. So you need to quit listening to the world and talking what the world says. Start listening to God, to his word, and talk what the word says. Yeah. Speak, we need to learn to speak like God speaks. The Bible declares that God's, God speaks of things that be not as though they were. It tells us that he declares the end or the end result from the beginning when he first sets in motion with his faith to produce something. And he, and he, he says that his word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which he's purposed. We've got to have the same attitude that we're going to send our words of faith forward out of our mouth. We're going to speak words of faith. And when we do, we've got to have the confidence that our words, because we're speaking forth what God has said, so we can expect our words to come to pass. Hallelujah, that's good news. We, we understand that when we're speaking according to the word of God, I don't mean just quote scripture. I'm talking about taking the word of God and putting it into a form of a personal declaration of faith. Uh, we, I just took today and put together, Pastor Mary gave me a list of prayers uh, in the New Testament, scriptures that, that where Paul prayed for the followers in different churches, the believers in different churches. And we can pray those prayers, but we can't just pray them, you know, kind of the way they're written because they're written to a church. We got to make it personal. We got to pray it for us, put it, put us into that prayer. Amen. So what happens is we begin to pray and speak creative words, mm -hmm. words that will change the very atmosphere that we live in. Amen. Uh, your words uh, carry spiritual spiritual power. I told you that already. Um, we have to do what Jesus said. Uh, he told the disciples, uh, have God's faith. So we've got to learn to not only have God's faith, but to develop it so that it's working in our lives. How do you have God's faith? Well, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So the way that you get God's faith is you get his word in you. And his word is going to, as you begin to talk it out as a personal declaration of faith over your situation, it's going to build faith in you as it renews your mind. That's also how you resist the devil. You declare the word. The devil flees. He can't stand around when you're talking the word all the time. Two things that, well, there's, there's, there's three major things the devil really, he cannot stand around. He can't stand around people that are praising God. He can't stay around people that are uh, confessing God, confessing and declaring the word of God. And he, he can't uh, stand around people that are moving in faith because we get results and he knows that he's the target and he didn't want to be the target. So he takes off and leaves you alone looking for a better time when you're down and you're not walking by faith. You're not believing the word. That's when he comes back and tries to get you. So we can't ever let down. We can't let down our shoe. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, we need to begin to declare or say about ourselves and our situation, what God has already said in his word. 
we need to realize God's word reveals his plan and his will for our lives. So when we go to the word of God and we find it says, by his stripes, ye were healed. That's God's plan and that's God's will for you. And so we begin to declare, by his stripes, I was healed. Here's somebody right now with a back problem. Uh, you, you just have an aching. It almost feels like your spine is aching. Well, right now, God's healing that. In the name of Jesus, I command that ache to go. Whatever is causing it, I command it to be healed in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we talked about the law of agreement. We have to get in agreement with what God says or we're not in agreement and faith cannot be released. Uh, we got to also get in agreement with what the, thing, the things that God does. That's why we have to find out what God does because that's part of revealing his will to us. We get in agreement by acting like the way God, or act, yeah, acting the way God acts, doing what God does. Amen? All right. Uh, disagreement is a destroyer. Disagreement uh, is division, which is two visions. Instead of believing and agreeing with God and his word, uh, you get in disagreement by saying things like, well, I'm not sure I believe that. I mean, does that really work? So that's what the devil did. He questioned everything. He questioned Adam and Eve on what God had said. He questioned Jesus on what God had said. And that's what he does. That's his trick. He questions you and gets you to thinking, well, you know, what? how can I walk on water? I mean, that's, you know, sure they did it in the Bible, but well, what's the difference between that then and now? They believed God and, and they walked on water. Peter walked on water. Yes, he almost drowned, but he got up. Jesus, he said, Lord, save me from drowning. And Jesus reached out his hand and picked him up. And guess what? Peter walked back to the boat on the water. All we hear about is Peter, you know, almost drowning. But you don't realize he actually walked back to the boat. If we need to walk in water and, and there's no reason, you know, you need to go out back in your backyard and try and walk across the pool, you're going to get wet. Because that's not a need. When there's a supernatural need, God has a supernatural answer. The Bible says with every, and let me, let me explain this to you, every temptation, every test, every trial, every tribulation. Why do I group those together? Because they all come from the same Greek word, all right? And, and they all basically mean the same thing. Temptation, test, trials, and tribulation. It's all pressure put against you to bring defeat and failure into your life. Well, the Bible says that when temptation, test, trial, and tribulation comes our way, that God provides a way of escape. He provides a way of escape. Now, the Bible says in the world you'll have pressure, tribulation, he said. He, but Jesus said, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. In other words, that's been defeated. All you got to do is decide to receive it and walk in it. Hallelujah. Am I getting too hard on you? I'm a teacher, but I'm also a preacher sometimes. So I kind of got both going tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Um, so we don't want to get in division, uh, 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 opposition to God. We won't agree with God. If any two shall agree on earth is touching anything they ask, it shall be done. Hallelujah. I just noticed that folks that have tuned in, Steve and Torsha and men, praise God. Good to have you folks with us tonight. And I know there's many others because we never see uh, Sunday. I think we it said we had 17 people online live and we only saw, I think, three people uh, that said something. We knew they were there. Uh, but since then, we've jumped up. I, I think we're, uh, I don't recall the exact numbers now, but I know we've reached uh, well over 5,000 people uh, since Sunday. So God's doing a great thing. Amen. All right. Um, we talked about time and distance uh, that we allow them to become factors in our prayers and our faith, but they're not factors because there's no time or distance in the spirit realm. So we have to kind of set that aside and realize you know, that God, in the spirit realm, it's always right now. Now faith is. God is the I am. Okay, so we've got to start believing that the moment I say amen, it's done. We may not see it manifested yet, but it is done. And we've got to begin to expect to see the manifestation once we say amen. Otherwise, we're just being religious. All right, uh, let's see. No time, no distance in the kingdom of God. There's no time or distance in prayer. Uh, we talked about the Thomas syndrome, uh, which uh, Thomas had to see it in order to believe it, touch in order to believe. In other words, he had to see it with his senses 
before he could believe it. We've got to be able to see it with our spirit by faith before we ever get to see it in the natural. When you begin to see it with your spirit by faith in the word of God, what, what happens is we're seeing it, we're applying faith, and it will produce a manifestation. But when you have to see it before you can believe, it doesn't work that way. You have to believe before you see it. That's why we spend time meditating the word of God. All right. Um, God, Job, Abraham, David, Jesus. What do they all have in common? All of them were men of faith. And God being God, of course, he is the author of faith. So God moved by faith and brought forth creation and us. Job moved by faith and was delivered and re got back twice what he lost. Abraham moved by faith, got back his son who was as good as dead. And, and then the promises that God made to Abraham began to come to pass. David uh, got back Israel because they were up, of, up against uh, the Philistines and Goliath. And, and David went out and slew the giant by faith in a covenant God, his covenant God. Amen. Jesus walked by faith in the covenant and got results and ended up redeeming mankind. And the Bible says righteousness has come upon all men. All you got to do is receive it. So how do I receive it? Jesus, I give myself to you. Come and be my Lord. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me, cleanse me from unrighteousness. I make you my Lord now. And then you, you serve the Lord. You, you're not a slave. You become a child of God. You're a joint heir with Christ, not a slave of Christ. And you're a child of God. And being a child is different than being a servant. Amen? All right. All right. So I've taken up enough time with recaps. Let me spend the rest of the time with what I want to talk about tonight. There's other ways of releasing spiritual power into our situation. And the first one I want to mention, and we're kind of wrapping up this particular series. I don't know if we will tonight, but tonight or next week, maybe. Uh, Psalm 8.2 says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, so that thou mightest still the uh, enemy and stop the avenger. Now, Jesus quoted that, and he, he, mentioned, he used the word praise, that you have ordained praise, because praise creates strength. When you're praising God, you, you're being emboldened, and you get strong in the spirit when you praise God. Now, of course, there's other things that you need to do to stay strong. You need to walk by faith, declare the word of God, meditate the word, act on the word. But when you're praising God, there's a supernatural strength that rises up inside of you. It's a spiritual strength. Amen. And when you praise and you worship, you release strength, you release power, supernatural power into your life. Matthew 21, 16, King James translation. Uh, he said unto, unto him, Hearest thou, or they, they said unto him, Hearest thou what these are what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, or yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings that hast perfected or ordained praise? That was King James. Well, another translation says ordained. So there you have the original, and then you have Jesus that is uh, quoting that. And he, he inter interchanges the word strength and praise. So that ought to tell you something about how powerful praise is. Psalms 100 verse 4 from the Amplified Translation says to enter into his gates that's the outward, the outer area, the gates. That's where you first get access. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, bless and affectionately praise his holy name. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That gives you access. And as you continue the thanksgiving and the praise, you move into the courts or the very presence of God. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, let me give you an example here. We're going to read some verses. This is from the King James, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse only seven verses here. Uh, he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. 
Boy, I'll tell you what, I've been saying that a lot. The battle isn't mine, it is God's. When I sit here and I say, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? I'm, I'm doing do, two broadcasts a week. Uh, I'm, I'm a, we're having an online church. I have online congregations. Some of you are starting to tune in more often. Uh, some have committed to be a part of this congregation online. Uh, some of you have committed to support this uh, ministry. Thank you for that. But I'm looking and thinking, you know, I've been, I've been ministering uh, for 49 years. July uh, will be our, will begin our 50th year of ministry. And, uh, you know, I, I've always been active and busy ministering. You know, you know, we had church services, uh, did some traveling and preaching in other places. And, um, and then we started online about 10 years ago on Facebook. And we've been going ever since. But like I said, we've increased from 50 to 70, you know, views a week up to 15, uh, 12 to 15,000 views a week on average. And uh, that's a big jump in a very short period of time. All that's happened in, in this past nine months. So obviously God is doing something, but I'm so used to, you know, getting up and going down to the church and, and praying around the church and, uh, you know, being there for, you know, men's Bible studies, men's fellowship, the youth meetings, um, helping, you know, when there was women's fellowships and uh, any activities and outings and stuff like that. You know, you, as a pastor in, in a physical congregation, you're a very busy person. And then you've got to deal with people who want to fuss with you and they want to get in dive vision. They want to have their own vision of the way things ought to be. And, uh, you know, that doesn't work. So you've got to deal with some of the attitudes of people and so forth. You, you got counseling, you got prayer with people. And so I sit here and, and I, I do this broadcast twice a week. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, now what else am I supposed to be doing? And I've learned, if I haven't learned anything else over the years, I've learned to not just jump out and do something because I think I ought to, or it sounds like a good idea. I've learned to let God direct me. And when he speaks, I respond. And, uh, you know, we're, we're believing God for doors of utterance to open up. We are available for ministry, uh, you know, to go into, into churches and Bible study groups and so forth and teach and preach and pray for the sick. Uh, but until those doors open. I'm doing what God told me to do. When he opens the doors, I'll go through the doors. Amen. So there's, there's times when we need to understand that we don't need to be afraid of the things that are facing us. Now, you know, in my situation, our situation, you know, what's facing us? Well, you know, we're, we're so used to having a congregation and, and, and people tithing faithfully and giving faithfully and, and praying for us and and we've still got, you know, a, a group that is praying for us and supporting, you know, to a degree. And we appreciate that. But that's a big deal to go from that to this. So well, I understand, you know, but the promise is the battle isn't mine. <laughs> I, I don't have to make it happen. God's the one that makes it happen. He's the one that opens up doors. He's the one that brings people uh, onto our social media platforms to listen to what we've got to say. God is the one that moves on people's hearts to support this ministry and to give or, or to tithes because some consider this their, their online church and I'm their online pastor. So we've got people that, that tithe, but God's the one that does that. I can't make that happen. I can tell you all about why you should, but ultimately it's got to be God moving on your heart. So what I've learned in these things is not to get all been out of shape and uptight and, and nervous and anxious about things. Uh, the Bible says, cast all your care over on the Lord, for he cares for you. you say, why do you talk so fast? Because I've only got an hour. <laughs> you can rewind me as much as you want once I'm done, but I'm getting the information out to you. Amen. All right. So verse 16, he tells them, tomorrow go you down against them, the enemy. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Jer 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 <laughs> Forgive me if I mispronounce that. Jeruel. <clears throat> you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. 
And Jehosh Jehoshaphat bowed his head uh, with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. They didn't just have a time of quiet prayer. You know, sometimes I grew up in church, so I remember pastors saying, well, let's just have a time of quiet prayer now. Uh, let's just, you know, we'll praise in our hearts for a little bit here, a few minutes. Silent prayer. Or you, here's one, uh, you know, silent prayer request. There's no such thing. That's somebody hoping and wishing, but no results. These people, man, when they found out they weren't going to have to fight, that God was going to fight on their behalf and deliver them, they had nothing to fear. They got the praisers out there and they began to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went uh, forth into the wilderness of uh, Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Ju Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe as prophets, and ye shall prosper. Ooh, there's a prosperity scripture. <laughs> Believe as prophets. Today, prophets operate differently than they did in the Old Testament. And there's a lot of us that operate prophetically that may not be operating in the office of a prophet, but we still have to listen. What is God speaking through his men and women? What is God saying through them? Because that's the people God sent to be his mouthpiece. Amen? All right. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed, listen, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth, for, endureth forever. They went, the, the praisers went before the army. What do you think would happen if, if we had a battle to fight and the, the, the um, commanding officer, the general said, you know what? Let's get all these believers out here that know how to praise God. Let's put them out in the front line before we launch this battle. I wonder how many praisers would show up. <laughs> I wonder how many believers would say, oh yeah, I'll go out there on the front line and get, take a chance of getting shot at because I believe my God. You know, that, that would be a hard thing to get people to do. And yet they did it. And it says that when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir which were come up against Judah, and they were self-slaughtered. <laughs> wow, that, that's, uh, that's the power of God. When, you, we get, when we finally get out of crying and begging and telling God how unworthy we are, and we finally begin to lift our hands and praise God for the answers, you don't praise God for the problem. Back in the 70s, there was uh, some pastor that wrote uh, a couple of books, and the books had to do with thank God for everything. You have a car accident, thank God for the car accident. You end up in the hospital, thank God for the, for the sickness or the disease or whatever it might be. You lose a child, thank God uh, he took that child to be with him. He needed that child in heaven. That's a bunch of baloney. That's not God. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and, steal, kill, and destroy. God is not a thief. God didn't take your child. God didn't take your husband. God didn't take your wife. God didn't take your business or your finances. God's the adder unto and the multiplier, not the taker away. Amen. Amen. All right. So we, what do we do? We get into a situation. We need a miracle. We need deliverance. We need healing. We need provision. We need to begin to praise God. Quit worrying, quit fretting, and start praising God. Do what they did. It worked for them. It'll work for us. God's no respect to a person's. Begin to praise God. Find out what God promises and praise him for what he has guaranteed, his covenant promises. Hallelujah. I'm not even paying attention to my screens here and seeing what's going on. Praise God. Let's see if anybody new has joined. Well, we've got some good watchers. Praise the Lord and good receivers. Amen. All right. Um, let's see what time we got. Oh, we still got a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So the next thing I want to share with you, I, I got so excited about the praise and I just wanted to start to to, to praise and shout right now, but we got to go on with the teaching. You can praise and shout all you want after we're done. All right. Uh, 
Praying in the spirit is another way to release spiritual power into your life. And that's what we're talking about is uh, releasing spiritual power. And we've been talking about that uh, uh, for nine weeks now on nine Tuesday nights. And even though there's been different titles, that's the series that we've been in. So praying in the spirit, Jude 1 verse 20 it says, but ye, beloved, who's that? That's us. We're the beloved. Mm -hmm. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. There's only one way that uh, is understandable in New Testament uh, uh, language and understanding. That goes back to the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out and they were filled with the Spirit and they spoke in tongues and they praised God in tongues. And the multitude heard them, and what they heard, and the Holy Spirit gave them the interpretation in their own language and dialect. But the believers were in there. They were praising God. They were praying in the Spirit and worshiping and singing in the Spirit, mm -hmm. building themselves up on their most holy faith. Well, you can release spiritual power doing that. And that really goes along with the praise and the worship. Amen? 1 Corinthians 14, 14, the apostle uh, Paul says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays by the Holy Spirit within me. Amen. He tells us really clear. When, when I'm fit, filled with the spirit, I'm born again as spirit filled. Say, well, what do you mean spirit filled? I, I got all there is when I got born again. No, you didn't. The, 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 there are seven instances in the New Testament where the apostles found out there were other believers who had not yet, some of them had not even heard of the Holy Spirit, much less been filled. And they went out and they ministered to these people. And the I think it's five out of the seven times, we clearly see that they, once they were spirit filled, they received the Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues. And the other two times, it was the only new gift besides interpretation of tongues in the New Testament. So the only way they knew that they had been spirit filled was they had to be speaking in tongues. So, that's an experience we ought to have. If you don't have that, say, Holy Spirit, come into my life now. Fill me now and give me, teach me my prayer language. And you will enter a whole new realm of Christianity, I'll tell you. And it's not a bunch of people running around acting like a bunch of silly idiots. I, like I told you, I grew up in Pentecost. I've seen the silly, but I've seen the power too. And I'll tell you what, I know the difference. Amen. All right. Romans 8, verse 26 and 27 Amplified translation. So too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. Now, the reason why, I, I, when he said that, you got to go back to what he said just before that. He said, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness, obviously we don't know how to pray, or we wouldn't be in that place of needing aid because we are in weakness. So then when you're spirit filled, you can call on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it says that he comes to our aid and he knows how to offer up worthily. Uh, and we don't know how to do it at pray as we ought, but the spirit himself goes to meet our supplication or our prayers and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Now, there's another another whole experience when you're born again and spirit filled. There's another experience uh, that is being talked about here that only happens if you're spirit filled. And this groaning in the spirit, your unspeakable yearnings and groanings in the spirit. Uh, I've experienced that where I, I've gone into prayer. And all of a sudden, I can't speak words. I can't pray in tongues. I can't speak English. The Holy Spirit has taken over and he's speaking uh, through me. And there's groanings coming forth from way down deep inside. And, and you know, you, you wonder, in my mind, when that's happened, I wonder what in the world is going on. Well, later I learned and I understood what was going on. And it's something that you don't do. You can't fake. You can't make it happen. It's as the Spirit wills. But he knows because that's a time when we're actually giving birth to something. 
When we start having that experience, we're birthing something. It may be birthing a ministry. It may be birthing a miracle. Uh, there's any number of things it could be. All right, so verse 27, and he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his in intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. The Holy Spirit knows how to pray the perfect will of God when we don't know how to pray. My brother came under attack this past few months um, with a number of, of things that doctors, any one of them could have been uh, life-threatening, life-ending. And uh, the doctors, uh, you know, doctors don't give a lot of hope. They say, well, you know, or they say, we'll, we'll try this or we'll try that and, and uh, see what kind of response. If it works, fine. If it doesn't, we'll try something else. That's why they call it practicing medicine because they're still in practice. I want somebody who knows what he's doing. That's the Holy Ghost and my Father God as well. Amen. And, and so they told my brother, uh, you know, well, uh, we hope to find, and I don't understand all these numbers, but uh, it has to do with cancer. And uh, they, they told him, if we can get you down around 75 or under, that would be great. He went back, I think it was just in the past week, and they did whatever the tests are that they do. And they found that he was down at 40. And the doctor said, wow, you're amazing. You know, he, he said, you're my, po I, I don't know the exact words he used, but something like, you're kind of my poster child here. I, I was hoping you'd get down to 75 and you're clear down to 40. And I talked to my brother last night and he shared this with me. And uh, God's doing a miracle in his body. And he's not willing to give up. He could lay down and say, okay, I'm going on to heaven. But he's got a wife and kids. And uh, I think one of his kids just got married and he wants grandkids. And, and he, he doesn't want to give up his body at this point. And I said, well, Tim, I said, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to pray and agree with with you on the word of God, Pastor Mary and I will pray. And we have, I've been praying for him because when I first heard that, I wasn't sure how to pray because I didn't know what he was believing. And sometimes, you know, you start praying for somebody and they're not believing what you're praying for. It's not going to work. Then, and then you become discouraged when it doesn't work. <clears throat> and so I said, Holy Spirit, I really don't know how to pray for my brother. So I'm going to pray in the spirit, Holy Spirit, you pray the perfect will of God through me. Give me utterance. Show me what I need to do, if anything, how I need to do it. But, but you pray through me. And I went to praying in the spirit. And then I get this call last night. My brother talks about, yes, I'm, I'm born again and I love the Lord. And he said, I may not be perfect in a lot of the ways I act or talk, but, but I, I know the Lord is my Lord, my Savior. And God is my Father. And I thought, praise God. All right. And I know more about how to pray for him now after that conversation. And he's coming back. He's coming out of that in the name of Jesus. I declare it that, that all that cancer dies in his body. Every other thing they predicted, uh, his heart is strong. Just like God gave me a new heart, I declare God gives him a new heart and, and he's healed from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. And I, I declare that because him and I got an agreement last night and Mary and I are in agreement. And we're, guess what? We're in agreement with God because that's God's will. God is not, his will is not for you to die of cancer. His will is not for you to die of a heart attack or, or a brain hemorrhage or any other number of things, COVID or anything else. That's not God's plan. God didn't do any of that stuff. Jesus said, I came to give you life and that in abundance. Amen. All right. Um, guess what we're going to do? We're going to stop right here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the next section I can't do in five minutes or so. I think we've got about five or six minutes left. So let me share this. Once again, if you need prayer, uh, all you've got to do is right now, while we're still here, uh, you can just reach out and by faith, you can believe God and say, Father, the anointing is flowing right now. Pastor Bill declared the anointing, the healing anointing is flowing. So I receive my healing right now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Receive it now. And th now I know there's always somebody that says, um, you know, how can we support this ministry? Well, let me tell you, you know, we've got, like I said, we've got a few uh, faithful people that support. Uh, we're believing for 100 monthly partners. We've got a ways to go. I won't tell you the exact number, but we've got a ways to go. And um, 
and, and I'm talking about monthly partners, people that say, I'm committed to supporting this ministry. I'm going to pray for you guys. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to intercede. I'm going to get my faith in agreement with you on your faith projects. And we're going to make sure financially that, that we're a part of whatever God's having you do. So we appreciate that. And then there's some that just maybe want to give once uh, because they've been blessed. And there's others that might want to give sporadically. But let me tell you how you can do that. Uh, if, uh, in fact, I'm going to put a, a, a screen up on the screen. I'm going to put information about our PayPal account, our post office box, and our Venmo account. And I'll continue to talk. You can see me in the background. If you <clears throat> want to give my check or money order, make it out to CFC. You see the address there at the top of the screen. Post office box 10, I mean 17, <laughs> 10, 74. No, wait a minute, I got that wrong. It's not 17. Oh, I got to change that. It's 141074. I got I to change that. Man, I didn't know. Steve Cranebrink said taking antibiotics for infection in toes. God is healing now. Okay, I agree. I command healing flowing into your toes right now. In the name of Jesus, you won't need those antibiotics. The, the doctor's going to say, you don't need this anymore. I curse that thing, command it to leave your body. Leave your feet in Jesus' name. Amen. And William's on. No, William, good to have you on tonight, too. Love you guys. Um, I got the wrong post office box up there, so ignore that. The right post office box. I don't know how I did that. It's 141074, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74014. Now, I did get the PayPal account correct, and that's our email address, wemmons one at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to, if you got a PayPal account, you want to give through PayPal, just make sure after you put in the amount you're going to give, uh, that the, they're going to ask you about, um, the friends and family option. Make sure you click that. Otherwise they take out 4.8% fees and that's just money that goes to them instead of the work of God. Uh, if you have a Venmo account, uh, you can find us with the at symbol at William dash Emmons dash 10, just the way you see it. And uh, then you go in there and follow the steps. You know how, if you got a Venmo account, you know how to send money with that. These accounts uh, are tied to our ministry accounts. When the money is transferred, it goes directly into our ministry accounts, and then it's used as God directs us. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in this ministry. If you want to give by debit or credit card, you can email us. Use that email that's showing up there on the PayPal account. Just email us your debit or credit card information. We'll run the card for the amount you save. When that goes through, we'll delete that from our devices so nobody can get their hands on it. Uh, you can also text it if you'd rather text 818-679-7067. 818-679-7067. And as soon as we're off the air, I'm going to fix that post office box. I don't know how I got that wrong box address. Listen, I know Instagram is going to have to go, hey, Armin's been on too. Hey, Armin, good to have you with us tonight. I know there's a bunch on there. I we can't see and don't know, but uh, but we love you guys. Appreciate every one of you. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Uh, I'm starting a new year. I'm I'm now starting my 73rd year and going strong in the name of Jesus. Hey, we'll see you guys Sunday morning, and and come into the service prepared to worship God, prepared to receive, invite people, start telling people, share whatever social media platform you're watching this on, share it, like it, uh, let people know that there's uh, somebody preaching like this and, and that you're getting ministered to and blessed and fed spiritually so we can begin to reach more people. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to let you guys go. Have a blessed week. I'm going to leave this information up on the screen for a few minutes and we will see you Sunday.